Hello, and welcome to the course. I'm Nathan George, an assistant professor at Regis University in Denver, Colorado, where I teach and develop data science courses. In this course, we'll learn how to use machine learning for finance. Machine learning has been used in finance for years. Here's an example from Zax, which uses machine learning to predict future earnings of companies. A report by JP Morgan says investors who don't know machine learning will be left behind. Most data we'll use is stock prices, like the price of AMD stock shown here. We'll use many machine learning methods to predict future prices and select stock portfolios. In this course, we'll use a few stocks, including LNG and AMD. These are highly volatile, meaning their price moves around a lot. The data are stored in Pandas data frames, such as AMD DF. I only included two columns we will use as inputs in our machine learning algorithms the adjusted close price, and adjusted volume. The adjusted close price is the price at the end of each day, adjusted for things like stock splits. The adjusted volume is the number of shares exchanged that day. We always want to do exploratory data analysis, or EDA, on new data to understand it. EDA is broad, but we'll focus on plots of raw data, histograms, scatter plots, and correlations. The Pandas library has some nice built-in plotting methods for data frames. For example, we can use plot to show line plots of the raw data and plot.hist for histograms. Using machine learning for finance can be accomplished in many ways. We could predict the raw prices of our stocks, but typically we'll predict percent changes. This makes it easier to create a general purpose model for stock price prediction. It will also make it easier to interpret our results. To get the percent change over a period, we can use PCT change on a pandas data frame. We can use this to see a histogram of percent changes over time, which typically is a right skewed, nearly normal distribution for stocks. Another tool we'll use is shift from pandas. This shifts the index, so if we give it minus 10, as shown here, then we'll create a new column with the closing price 10 days in the future. We can then get the price percent change 10 days in the future with pandas PCT change. We'll also look at the correlations with the core function from pandas. Core uses Pearson correlation by default, which assumes normal distributions and measures linear correlations. If you were to examine the relationship between current price and the future price, you'd see a high Pearson correlation. For example, this plot scatters the current price versus the price 10 days in the future and shows a Pearson correlation of about 98%. This correlation is large because the raw magnitude of prices can't change that fast in 10 days. However, this is deceiving. Although it looks like we can predict future prices based on the current price, it's only a mirage. The range of future prices based on the current price is too large to be useful. Instead, we'll check the correlations between our percent price changes to see if previous price changes can predict future price changes. Notice the axis limits are almost the same because the price changes are only 10 days apart. Depending on the time frame and parameters you use, you might see some strong correlations, like this negative 70% correlation from the middle of 2014. Now let's explore the data we'll be using in this course.